we'll demonstrate how you can now build real-time um, applications uh, in Alpha Anywhere uh, that use uh, WebSockets. So to demonstrate this, we actually have three different browsers open right now running a UX component. And we're going to show how um, any user of this application can send a message that is received immediately by all of the other um, uh, UX components here that are connected. So basically, this is a so-called connected client application. So let's go over here and type in, say, message1 uh, from user1 and then click the send message button and watch that watch these other two screens here as soon as I press the send message button. So you can see that this is a real-time application. So as soon as I click the button to uh, send this message, this message got broadcast and all of the other clients that were listening got to see the message. So now I'm going to go over to the second client over here and type in say message uh, 2 and this is going to be uh, user uh, two and now I'm going to go and hit send and you can see that it shows up immediately in the other clients and then let's go here to this guy and type in say message three and this will be uh, user three and then go ahead and hit the send message button and you can see it shows up immediately over there and then let's go back here another message and then hit the send button and you can see the message shows up so this is demonstrating how um, you can build um, these real-time applications that use the WebSocket server in uh, Alpha Anywhere to build uh, real-time applications. So what we're going to do now is go behind the scenes and show you exactly how this was um, um, was uh, set up. But before doing that, I just want to mention that when the user um, over here presses this button to send the message, the message is broadcast and all of the other clients um, um, are listening for those messages and there's an event handler uh, that each of these components have called the um, uh, WebSocket on message event and the that event is fired when a message is received and then the event handler is free to do whatever it wants with the uh, with the message and this uh, real-time uh, functionality can be added to both uh, UX components and also to grid components. So let's pick this up in the next video where we go behind the scenes and take a look at how real-time applications are configured. So we're continuing now discussing how to build real-time applications in Alpha Anywhere that use uh, WebSockets and uh, let's go now to the UX component builder and see what we've done. So here's our UX component and you can see the first thing that we did was we went over to the advanced uh, section over here on the properties pane and we turned on the WebSocket server. What we've also done is gone to our project properties over here and specified that this application uses uh, the WebSocket, is a WebSocket application and we've turned on the enable um, uh, property here and then specified what port the WebSocket server is running on. So you can specify any port that you want of course as long as it's uh, that port is is not in use. So now let's go and take a look at the construction of the, the application itself. So you can see that what we have is a list control over here where the messages are shown and this list control has been set to just static data with a column called name and a column called message. So we don't have any actual rows of data, we just have the two column names. And then we've gone to the list layout and chosen name and message. So initially when the component is rendered, there are no messages in the, in the list, but uh, we can then populate it. Then you can see we just have a standard uh, message text, which is a text area where the user will uh, type in the message and a name where the user will type in their name and then we have the uh, send message button which actually sends the message so if we uh, go to the on click event here we see that there's a WebSocket server action so there's a new action in action JavaScript and if we basically bring up the uh, builder here we'll see that the action that we chose was send a message and uh, then we've specified that the message itself will be generated, the, the, the body of the message will be generated using a JavaScript, using JavaScript code. And if we look at our JavaScript, here's our code. So basically the code is pretty simple. All it's doing is it's reading the value of the name 
uh, of the name out of the name field and it's reading the message body out of the message text field so this is the text area field and this is the name field and if either of those two fields is blank then we're just going to return false and put up an alert so that means no because we return false no message will actually be be sent and then you can see here we're basically creating um, an object and this is going to be used to actually populate the list so the list recall you recall had two fields one called name and one called message so we're creating an object here that has a name property and a message property then we're getting a pointer to the list by using the standard get control method and then we're appending this object uh, uh, to the list by using the append rows uh, function the append rows function takes an array so therefore we take this object and put it inside square brackets to make it into an array so this is the code that adds the message that I've just sent to the list so this is so this is so that I'm going to see the message that I sent in in my list so this is not affecting the list control in any of the other um, components that are running so here is the w where we actually construct the message so we're constructing the message as a JSON object that has a type property which is uh, which we've just arbitrarily set to message board a name property where we read the name and a message text property so this is the object that we're going to send as our message but the message needs to be a string so we need to basically um, call JSON stringify to take this object and stringify it and then we return that value because the we this is the JavaScript function that needs to return the message text so this is going to now take a string of uh, a, a JSON string and return this as the message body and then the final thing that we're doing here is we're setting the message text to blank so that the user can now type in his next message so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing now with our discussion of WebSocket applications. So um, this is the message now that is going to be sent. And now if we just go ahead here and click OK, and uh, then click OK again here, and then just say View JavaScript, we can see that um, he has the message. Um, and then in the actual code itself, you can see we're calling this uh, code here to actually send the message. So this is the code, this is the actual JavaScript that is going to broadcast the message to all of the clients who have been set up to listen for messages. So now let's go to the um, client side event over here and on the client side event we've got a WebSocket on message event. So this is the event that will fire when a message is received. So in the, in the demonstration that we did we had three uh, browsers open. So in the first browser we typed in a message and hit the send button which caused the message to be sent to all of the other clients. So the, the other two clients uh, received the message and the WebSocket uh, on message event fired. So you'll recall from the um, uh, previous video that we have uh, taken the message and uh, which was a JSON, a JSON object. So when the message is received we can take that uh, message text which is just in the format of a JSON object and pass it to actually get back to the object and now what we're saying is that if the message type is message board and the reason that we put the message type in is that you might have lots of different message types um, that are being transmitted and your handler needs to be different for depending on the message type so in this case we just have a single message type uh, called message board and what we want to do when we receive a message called message board is we want to add a new row to the list so you can see here we get a pointer to the list so now we have list lobj which is appointed to our list and here is the data that we want to append to the list so we've we're pulling the name out of the message and the message text out of the message that was received and then we basically call the append rows and this appends uh, the row to the um, list so that all of the uh, connected clients immediately see uh, the new message so in this particular case when the user presses the send message button over here basically the message is sent directly to all of the connected clients 
without um, actually touching the the alpha server. It's just the uh, WebSocket server that is dealing with the message. But if we go back now and take a look at our uh, WebSocket server actions, we can see that in addition to the send a message action, there's a, um, an action here called stop listening. And when, if you um, execute this action, then this component will stop listening to messages. In other words, any message that is broadcast will no longer trigger the WebSocket on message event. The uh, start listening can be used after you do a stop listening to re resume listening for messages. But this is the interesting one over here called server side send message. So what this particular action does is allow you to make an AJAX callback um, to the alpha server and uh, execute an XBasic function that can be used to compute the contents of the message and then the server will, will then broadcast that message to all of the connected clients. So what we've shown in this video is uh, very powerful features for building real-time connected client applications by using a WebSocket server in your alpha applications. Thanks very much for watching.